Welcome to part one of our lecture series on using the Raspberry Pi Plus camera to create our own QR code scanner. In this lecture series, we'll be using our Raspberry Pi and the camera for the Pi to create a QR code scanner. So we'll look at ways to create a QR code and save that to file. And then we'll write a detection algorithm that will determine if a QR code is present in the camera field of view. And if that QR code is present, if a detection is made, we'll go ahead and draw a bounding box around the QR code, and then we'll print the value of the QR code, the information stored in that QR code, to the screen as well as the terminal window. I should also point out here that to use the QR code library in Python and with the Raspberry Pi, we'll need to upgrade our Pis to OpenCV version 4. So if you're currently using an older version of OpenCV, we'll walk through the steps to upgrade to OpenCV4. And if by chance you're already using OpenCV4, you can go ahead and skip through the section of this lecture. To begin this lecture series, let's take a look at the history of a QR code and what makes a QR code. Before we do that though, we'll spend a couple minutes making sure that we have the proper version of OpenCV. So again, if you have OpenCV4 or greater on your machine, feel free to skip forward in the lecture. Let's begin this upgrade process by opening a PuTTY or terminal window, or you could open VNC. So log into your Pi, open up a window, and then we'll begin by entering Python. So I'll type in here Python 3, hit enter, I have to import OpenCV, so that'll be import CV2. And then to look at the version of OpenCV, I'll type CV2 dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. Note the double underscore there. Looks like on this Pi, I have version 3.4.4 of OpenCV installed. So I'll need to upgrade that then to version four or greater such that I can use these QR code packages. So let's exit out of Python, exit left, right parenthesis, and I'll just clear the screen. And then we'll continue with a sudo app-get update. sudo space app-get space update. Go ahead and hit enter and let that run and let everything update on your Pi. It's good, looks like everything has updated successfully. So we'll clear and let's continue. I'll type sudo app get install, and from here I need to install a bunch of libraries that will be used with OpenCV4. So let's go sudo app-get install libqt4-test, libqt4. We'll install python 3-sip as well as python 3-pyqt5, so pyqt5. I'll need to install libqt GUI, so libqt GUI4, GUI4. We'll go ahead and install libjasper-dev as well as libatlas-base-dev. And I'll put a dash Y here at the end. What that'll do is just say yes, go ahead and install everything. I won't have to actually respond to all the prompts asking me if I really wanna install the software. So go ahead and hit enter and let that run its course. Looks like everything has successfully installed in terms of the packages on this Pi, so that's good. Let's clear and we will continue. Next step then, let's go ahead and install this upgraded version of OpenCV. So let's type sudo pip3 install. This will be OpenCV-contrib-python and then it'll be a double equals. So equals equals 4.1.0.25. That's the version number of OpenCV that we'll install on this Pi. Go ahead and hit enter and let everything install. Looks like we've downloaded the package here. We're installing OpenCV. And good, looks like we've successfully gone ahead and installed OpenCV version 4.1 to this machine. So we want to confirm that that is the case. Let's clear out of here and go back into Python. We'll import CV2 again. And then again, to take a look at the version, let's go CV2 dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. 
And when we hit enter, we see we have successfully upgraded our OpenCV from version 3.4 up to version 4.1. That's good. So let's exit out of Python and continue. To use the Pi camera with OpenCV's video capture functionality, we'll type in here sudo mod probe, M O D P R O B E. So it'll be sudo mod probe BCM2835 dash v4l2 v4l2 and hit enter and then finally let's go ahead and install the qr code library so we'll run a sudo pip3 install qr code left bracket pil right bracket and hit enter And good, looks like we've successfully installed the QR code library. Now that we have all the packages required for QR code and we've upgraded to OpenCV4 or greater, let's take a look at the history of the QR code. The history of the QR code is really intimately tied to the history of the barcode. So in the 1960s, you have cash registers at various supermarkets and they are introducing this idea, this concept called a barcode. Supermarkets are putting barcodes on a variety of their products and it's greatly enhancing the efficiency with which products could be scanned and accounted for. However, a potential drawback of this barcode is that barcodes are inherently one-dimensional and so the way they're set up they can really only store a roughly 20 alphanumeric characters. So over time there becomes this interest, how can we store more information in a similar type of application? And folks started to think, well, instead of a one-dimensional array, what if we started to expand to two dimensions? So in the early 1990s, QR codes are introduced and they provide a two-dimensional storage of information. The ability to store information now in two dimensions greatly enhances the amount of information that can be stored it opens up a wide range of applications. For example, a variety of apps on mobile phones. Construction sites are using QR codes to track equipment and materials. Payment options start to open up, simply scanning a QR code and delivering a payment. And loyalty programs start using QR codes. So you walk into your favorite coffee shop and often you can simply scan a QR code and that will bring up your information or it'll tag your purchase to your loyalty number such that you get those rewards points. In terms of the design of the QR code, barcodes as we mentioned are inherently one dimensional and the way they operate, they require a narrow beam of light, typically a laser beam, to be mechanically scanned. So barcodes are inherently an active sensor QR codes, on the other hand, they are an array that can be detected by a two-dimensional image sensor. So QR codes enable the use of passive sensors to evaluate the information contained within the code. So there is an inherent advantage to switching over from the barcode, which requires an active architecture, to the QR code, which is passive. Each QR code has three squares that provide positional information, and then the information encoded in the QR code is effectively small dots. They're either black or white, which can then be converted to binary information, either a zero or a one. This position information inherently present in the QR code structure allows a range of image sensors to collect the information contained within the QR code as shown here, even when the image sensor is aligned at various angles with respect to the QR code itself. It's these three squares that provide that positional information that reduces the demand on alignment that comes with using a one-dimensional barcode. Let's take a deeper look at the structure of a QR code. Each QR code has three squares, large squares, as you see here, for position, there are also an array of smaller squares that are used primarily to provide alignment information. Now, these squares may differ depending on the version of the QR code that is used. 
So in the bits stored in this transparent blue, that gives you some version information about the QR code. And there's a range of versions that have been released over the years. Inside these red transparent blocks, we have some format information. And then once again, we see all of these zeros and ones are encoded. This binary information is encoded in the pixels that are black or white. If we look here at a particular QR code model, this one was released in 2005. We see those three positional squares. We see here a single square in this model used for alignment. We have formatting information in the bits under the transparent blue. We have a version information under the bits in the transparent gray. And then once again, all that information that's stored in this two dimensional array is stored in these bits that are either high or low, low being a white pixel, a zero, and high being in this case, a one or a black pixel. With the basic structure of QR codes in mind, let's take a look at two ways to create QR codes. The first will be to use a website, and then we'll use our Raspberry Pis to create a QR code as well. To begin, open up a browser on your laptop and head over to qr-code-generator.com and let's type in ENME space 489Y with an exclamation point. You'll notice as you're typing, the QR code here at right is automatically generated. To verify that this information has been properly encoded into the QR code, download a QR code scanner app on your cell phone. For me, I have an Android, so I'll bring up the Google Play Store and I'll search QR code scanner. You'll see there's a wide variety of options. Pick any of the scanners that have a reasonable rating and that should do the job. With your QR code scanner app installed, bring up the application and scan your cell phone across the screen of your laptop here such that the QR code is located. And once the QR code is located, go ahead and confirm then that the information has been properly encoded. So as we see here, the QR code has been created and it does have the information ENME489Y exclamation point. So we've created a QR code using a website. Now let's go ahead and create QR codes using our Raspberry Pi. Let's head back over to our Raspberry Pis and let's create a test script. So we'll type sudo nano create QR code dot pi. And let's begin by importing the QR code package into the script. So we'll type import QR code. And let's go ahead and confirm with the user that this package has imported properly. So I'll type print package imported properly. Go ahead and control X and save and execute this script by typing python3 create qr code.py and good it looks like the qr code package has properly imported let's continue to edit this file then we'll go back up to sudo nano and we'll come down and just blow out this print line since we know that we are able to import that package properly to continue here i'll type code equals qr code dot make left parenthesis, and inside we'll put the information that we want to be encoded in our QR code. So we'll type ENME489Y exclamation point, and we'll close that with a right parenthesis. And then let's come down and save the file. So we'll say code.save. Let's give it a name of ENME489Y qr code.png we'll close that with a right parenthesis and let's go ahead and tell the user that we successfully created the qr code and save that to file so we'll type print qr code generated and saved that looks good let's go ahead and control x to save that file and then we'll run this updated script. So we'll type Python3, create QR code.py, and hit enter. And it looks like our QR code has been generated and saved to file. To view the PNG file that has been created, we can FTP the file over. 
Here I've logged into the Raspberry Pi using VNC. I'll bring up a terminal window and if I ls asterisk.png, I see there's one .png file in this folder. Let's go ahead and open that file. So I'll type xdg-open enme489y qr code.png and here then is our qr code generated by our script and if we open our qr code scanner on our cell phone we'll see then we have correctly encoded this information into the qr code generated with our raspberry pi that all looks good then let's go ahead and close the png file we'll clear out of vnc and head back over to putty one final note for this lecture if you take a look at the documentation for the qr code library you'll notice that there are a range of advanced options so here is the documentation here's the install that we ran we ran a pip3 install qr code and if you continue to page down, you'll notice there are some options for advanced usage. So if you have an application where you'd like to tailor your QR code more specifically, feel free to dive deeper into the documentation available online. That wraps up part one of our lecture series on using our Raspberry Pis to create our very own QR code scanner. We'll continue in the next lecture by writing an algorithm that will detect the presence of a QR code as well as to decode the QR code and present the information embedded in the QR code to the screen all using our Raspberry Pi. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to me anytime. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.